I'm always on the lookout for entertaining things to show you folks, and I thought chasing Russell Crowe down would be an entertaining thing to do. Are you not entertained? Are you not entertained? I have Hollywood on my mind. And with that, remember the movie The Hangover? The Hangover 2, I think it was. One that was filmed in Bangkok. That uh, shot a lot of their uh, scenes right at the top of that baby. That big old white monstrosity there. Where the bar scene was. So Hollywood. Why would I be thinking about Hollywood? Well, when I came back from the States three weeks ago, did my seven days in quarantine, one of the things I decided to do with my YouTube channel is kind of focus away from myself and the stories that I've been telling about my life. Why? Because I kind of told all my stories. When I was in New York, I told my stories about the fire department, which were important to me, and I got them out there. And now I'm beginning to think, you know, I'm an old guy. Who wants to look at old guys? But maybe other old folks. And I recall back in like the 80s and the 90s when I was reading books like uh, The Greatest Generation or watching films like Saving Private Ryan, I can remember thinking like, well, yeah, okay, older generation, you like defeated the Nazis and other good shit, but isn't it time to move on? Well, to tell you the truth, I'm kind of feeling that way about boomers, my generation. Isn't it time to move on? And that's the frame of mind that I was in when I got back here to Bangkok and I started pointing my camera at younger people. My last two videos have been about the younger people that are surrounding me in my life. I'm very fortunate. I do have a very uh, rewarding and meaningful life here. So yeah, that's uh, kind of where my head was. So how did, how did all that get me to thinking about Hollywood? Well, whenever I finish putting a video together, I, I put some effort into planning them, and sometimes I do a little writing. I, I wrote an essay about this, this particular video. I'll link that in the description if you're interested. And I spend a couple of days putting the video together, and then when you click upload onto YouTube or whatever platform I'm putting it on, I feel like, okay, now what? I always get this feeling of having run out of uh, stuff to talk about or shoot about or write about. And that usually lasts uh, overnight. I wake up the next morning and I feel like, well, okay, time to find a new topic. So, a few days ago, that's the frame of mind I was in, and I saw this post on Facebook. Here is Sarah Jessica Parker kissing some dude, and underneath the photograph was the headline, story information leaking out of the movie studio on the remake of Sex in the City. Five years ago, I met a guy named Stan, an old New Yorker here in Bangkok, who had three small businesses. Stan is a very likable and colorful guy and a fellow New Yorker. We became pretty good friends. When the hordes of international tourists arriving in Bangkok came to an abrupt halt, Stan's small businesses suffered like many around the world. And Stan recently headed back to New York. I met him there last month, had lunch with him. And Stan was back in New York working at his old union job in the movie business. And he told me that he was working on the set of the remake of Sex in the City. Well, I'm thinking that'd make an entertaining story. I actually met Sarah Jessica Parker and her husband, Matthew Broderick, back in the 80s when I was a fireman working in the theater district in Midtown. I thought I could weave that story of my personal encounter with uh, Sarah Jessica Parker into, you know, some interesting kind of tidbits of information and gossip that I could extract from Stan. So I asked him, got any gossip? He replied, LOL, no way. He politely told me to fuck off. Oh, well, doesn't hurt for trying. By the way, it's the end of monsoon season and it can, the weather changes very rapidly here. It's always handy to have an umbrella. I'm always on the lookout for entertaining things to show you folks and I thought chasing Russell Crowe down 
would be an entertaining thing to do. Are you not entertained? Are you not entertained? And I'm here on a mission. I'm stalking Russell Crowe. I'm pretty certain Russell is staying here. I've had plenty of evidence to point me to that. And while, to tell you the truth, I don't really expect to run into him. I can make some nice videos just taking a picture of the hotel and the surrounding environment. So even if I don't run into our yeah. famous Australian movie star guy here at the Oriental, we're having a very nice little stop for coffee with my good friend Marcus, handsome Irishman that he is. You're going to have to accept him as a Russell Crowe replacement, I suppose. <laughs> he certainly is confident. Goodbye, Bangkok. Russell Crowe bids farewell to the city after a visit to the large Buddha statue at Wat Prak Nam Basalowin. <laughs> Marcus Concanon and Charlie Hub at the Mandarin Oriental Hotel in search of the guy who's gone. <laughs> There's an amusing irony here. If you remember at the beginning of this video, I said that I wanted to focus my attention away from boomers. Well, the movie that Russell Crowe is making is based on a book called The Greatest Beer Run Ever. So I listened to the audiobook just to get a little background. And guess what? The movie Russell Crowe is making is about the Vietnam War. One of the things I often say when I'm making these videos is that when I point my camera at a subject, the subject often changes the story. Hello, girls. See you the next time.